Boone earlier this afternoon. What'd you tell me? That I had to pick my sister up at seven o'clock. Now normally, and what time do we start the show? She gets out at seven o five. Sometimes it's even as late as seven fifteen. So what I what I had told you is, when we start setting up, because it's a process here, mm -hmm. we start at seven thirty. So I said there's a possibility. That tonight, because I've got to pick Allison up and I've got to get the chat room post and I've got to he get a live say post possibility. and I've got to get everything else, there's a chance that chance. that you may have to do the setup by yourself tonight. So that's the part you said. I'm sitting there and I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing my chat post and I got home and I'm home at about seven fifteen. Thank God she got out of work right at like seven oh five, seven oh six. You're back before we normally even start setting I'm up. I'm cruising in right. <coughs> so I'm doing my chat post. Boone comes in, and he says, I said, I'm coming right now, man. I'm coming to set up the set. Oh. And he says, it's already done, man. Yeah. I already did it. I look at the clock, and it's 7.31. 7.31! I said, wait. What time I do said, we have planned on the stream? What time do we have set start? up. What time do we have start on the stream? It's 7.50. 7.45. Forty, 7.45. Same time every week. Normal, 7.50 normal. all of a sudden. Uh, right. T today we're make my case look a little better. Yeah, we okay. were late today. All right. I don't know why we were late. I was ready. I had the whole studio set up. I'm waiting on everybody else, and, and I'm just waiting. I don't know what you guys are even doing or why he can't do it sooner. He always says it every week. Every week he says, dude, I'm behind so on news. i got to get the chat post up. I said, dude, i got a lot of work to do, too. So, But because we have a show at 8 o'clock, at a certain point I stop what I'm doing, and I prepare... For the scheduled event. So I had one more Makes site. Makes sense. The smallest site that, that the, the chat plug and the, the media plug goes yeah. up on. MMAScoops.com. How long does it take to post a chat plug? I hit uh, five minutes. And we start. Maybe. So this Maybe. this has to be set up by 745 because we hit this start. Doesn't, don't try to twist no, no, this. I'm don't try to twist this, well, man. Well, today was because, it? Because I hit the post button on MMA Scoops. And I look at the yeah. clock, 7.31, I got up out of my chair to come in here and set How up. How did that look when you got up? Like and that. you said, yeah. you said, it was already done yeah. at 7.31. And what did mind, I say to you? Normally we start at 7.30. At 7.31, this was already done. What did I say so to you? So don't blame and me what did for I say not to you? starting up. I was ready to go at 7.30. What did I say to you? When you I said it's 7.31, uh, I'm coming in a minute. You said it was already done. And then what did I say? So why did you start and then what early did I say? tonight? Why because did you I start early? You. That's what I'm asking you to you say. You started early tonight. I gave you the answer. He doesn't have it all of a sudden. I said, dude, I didn't want to hear you say, oh, I still got to do a chat post, so can you go do it? I didn't have to do that, though. Even weeks where he's not picking his sister up, he'll give me some, hey, can you start the set up a little earlier tonight, or can you handle, like, the setup because I gotta be I'm behind on the I am on and I gotta get the chat post up and this and I said and my response is always the same. Hey asshole, I got shit I gotta do too, but I stop at seven because I, I gotta be ready here at seven thirty Eastern time every single week. I don't know about that. Almost, Almost every single week. Almost all of a sudden. Yeah. Almost. We caught that, right? Maybe once a month. Okay. One we week. only do four shows a month. One <laughs> week out of four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm late. And, and I'm not that late. Yeah. Maybe well, how about this? Five when you do late. come in at 7.30, how much is even left to do by then? That he spends it. You're choice. talking about twisting That's it. That's your choice. You want to talk about how does finish? We start at about, 7.30. He talks about twisting words and shit. He comes in here. Every, I, I'd have to give you a list a lot the size of the Nile River. Everything's ready except for one thing. This table needs to be scooted back. The TV takes, needs to be taken off of it, and the sheet gets to put on it. That's it. Nobody's sounds, telling you. But he Nobody's comes in. He says, telling oh, you. He comes in. I did not that. He comes in. He says, "Oh, you saved the hardest part for me. Oh, you leave me the hard work." It's I'm like, asshole. I have moved heavy stuff. I the moved. TV. Oh, the bed's not the, heavy. The recliner's not oh, heavy. Give me a break. This how many, table's how not many, heavy. This table's not heavy. Three chairs aren't heavy. How many the feet feet second you need to move bed isn't move heavy. He's, he's twisting the shit. The computers. You gotta be kidding me. I do eighty things. You need to move. I gotta do one thing. You need to move that bed about six fucking inches every week. I gotta take the. Down, is that I six inches? The one I gotta pick up and drag oh across the God, room? Oh my God, dude! I can do it with one hand. I can take this thing. Right you mess my computer I up. I can drag it, it over here right, right now. Yeah. Here it is. Here is it is. Is that how you pick it up? With one hand. Is that how you with pick it up? With one hand. Oh, it's so heavy. God, it's I can so hold the TV with one hand. Get out of here, dude. Get out of here. And I'm not the one saying anything. He and comes and in and oh, you the hardest part for me. I do everything. He goes nobody in. tells you. You save the hardest part for me. <laughs> we don't oh, start the setup. We don't start the setup until 7.30 Eastern time. No, so that's when you come in. It's your it's choice, if then. it's your choice to set up at 7.25 Eastern time, then by all means, 
Do it yourself. It's my own asshole. Coming. I got it right. I'm not coming in until 7.30 Eastern time. If it was his room, no it would be a whole different story. There's no reason to come in if until his, 7.30. If and then was the you want to get to that. And then you want to get to yeah. taking the set down. Yeah. When this guy goes into the other computer in there. And you play with Jake till I come back and, and then we do it together. Submit, but he feed, says, yeah. submit feedback, everybody. Submit ask feedback. the fans. Well, this guy ask is the in fans. here taking down the set. You guys see it on the post show every week. You realize I'm letting him speak and then when I cry, I can in here yeah. taking down the post yeah. post show set. Are Every you? Week? Me. Because I could me. swear when you I come in here. A, A, ask the fans. For the last four weeks, I haven't even put a feedback post up. That's A. Okay? So that kills your theory for the last month. B, when I do, by the time I come in here, you're still sitting in this chair with Jacob in this chair. Hey, say the ABCs, Jake. And then I come in and we take the room down together. And then he leaves after a certain point because he's like, well... There's really nothing left for me to do. You really much got to set your computer up by yourself, and then your lights, and then your bed, and everything. I don't know how you want to set. He doesn't do anything. It's it's his show, and I do all the work. The archive. Who handles the archive? The recording, the uploading, the giving it to the archive. He comes in and talks for two hours. The whole reason I quit the show is because it was too much work and it didn't make any money. I give him the show, and now I'm doing all the work again, and he gets all the money. Well, there isn't any money, but uh -huh. you know what I mean. Why? <clears throat> so. I could do that for the next two hours when you start talking. WZR TV. WZR I'll be Army. relentless, bro. What's going on tonight? What's up, children? How we doing tonight? We good? <laughs> Everything good? We sound like a married couple. Here's, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. We are going to get these plugs out of the way. Um, I don't think we're going to be here for the full two hours tonight. Um, we're going to do Monday Night Raw. I know you were kind of hit or miss last night with viewing that show. Well, God, I play, play, play every week on New Year Miss. Right, 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 right. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I don't <laughs> think we're going to go the, uh, the full two hours uh, this week. Uh, not only that, the series, the NBA Finals, let me tell you, man, this series has been one. unbelievable, yeah. dude. You've got the, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors, right? Where's the Golden State Warriors from? Uh, California, San Francisco. He had to Google it the other night. Where, you didn't where, know either. I said Golden State Bridge, San Francisco. You yeah. asked me, though. You said, where is Golden State? I said, State I'm not Bridge? sure. Said, and then you, sure. What was the one you guessed? You said, like, Nebraska. Or so you had some weird state that you said. I like, like, I guessed any. You did. You Like, Louisiana. You had some weird Midwestern state. Whatever it was. I, I wasn't even sure he was wrong, so I'm not claiming I'm way, you know. Well, whatever, but, uh... Golden State, uh, it's Stephen Curry um, on the Warriors, who's the MVP of the league this season, and uh, obviously LeBron James in uh, in Cleveland. This series has been unbelievable, man. Uh, game one went to overtime. The Warriors won. Game two... That was the night we went out to meet friends at the pizza place. We came back and watched Right, and it was on. That was yeah. game one. Went to overtime, and uh, the Warriors wound up winning. And then game two... Was on uh, last Sunday night. night. Was Sunday it last night? night? Yeah, it was every, Sunday? Other, every other day. Okay. Uh, on Sunday night, and uh, went to overtime again. Did it go to overtime? Again? The Warriors were down that. by 12 points with like three minutes I know to it's go. One to one. Came back, wound up tying the game, sending it to overtime. There were some really bad calls in that game. The NBA. I know, Rigal, dickhead. <laughs> the NBA. We were guessing the state, not the city. The NBA actually came out today and admitted that the referees blew the calls in the game the other night. Which, which call did they blow? Not it like good. A... They said that there were four different calls that they blew the other night um, okay. in the game. And most of them happened in the fourth quarter going into overtime. Like integral but, calls? Uh, really bad calls. What's and integral mean? Two of them were against... Uh, integral means um, like like uh, game-deciding... Very important. Very you important. Just said important. That's very it. Important, important calls that That's it. would decide the important. game. Important. Right. Yeah. That you know would play a major factor. The game probably necessary important. Right. The game probably right. wouldn't w wouldn't have went to. Overtime. It would have been a different outcome if they got the calls right. LeBron was pissed. Was he? LeBron was. Pissed. So what was Kimmel just showing? He was showing the press conference and guys doing a bunch of handshakes that like clap for like twenty times and then they do that. Oh, they did that the other night. <laughs> uh, yeah, after after a win or something mm. like that, they do something in the locker room yeah, and then ritual. LeBron put up a video where like the entire team was in this tiny little hot tub. It was really weird, dude. It was really weird, dude. And they're black, They right? were all, yeah. So and how they, do they fit? They were Dick's all... Dick's got to be on someone's leg or something. They were all, Get your dickhead off my They knee. were all topless, and they were, Stephen? like, in this little fucking uh, hot tub. It was 
really weird. <coughs> game, but anyways, uh, so we've got game three going on tonight. They're back in Cleveland for, uh, for the next three games. So it's going to so be a sweep for the next three games probably. I don't know, man. I mean, Cleveland went into Golden State and uh, and won game two there. So, so who's that to say that They Golden lost State one and won one. So they yeah. won one away, and now they're home, and they're a badass team at home. I they don't know that about they them. Are. Absolutely. So three more wins plus the one they've already got. They sweep the series. I don't know. Golden State, I mean... Golden will probably win at least one game, and then it'll yeah, go... Yeah. It'll probably wind up going back to Golden State. Yeah, it'll be 3-2. and two, yeah. And then Cleveland's probably going to have to win back in California to... Well, no, they'll, to, they'll, to, win, to win it. they'll uh, lose in California. It'll be tied at 3-3, three to three, and then they go back home for Game 7, right? Uh, or game do they... 7, it would be... It's 2-3-2, two, two, I believe. It's 2-3-2 two, two, or 2-3-1-1. Two, one, and one. It's got to be 2-3-1-1. One, one. Who's the home team? I think Who's it's the two, better three, team? Two. Who had the better record? Cleveland, I, I, right? I, I, I'm not sure. I'm Whoever not, had the better I'm record sure. should... I mean, I don't even know the NBA that well. I followed it as a kid, but uh, you would... Here we go. 2-3-2. Two, two. There two, you three, go. Two, oh, yeah, no. No more 2-3-2, two, two, it says. No more 2-3-2. Two, three, so three, it's 2-3-1-1. Right. 2-3-1-1. One, one. Two, one, one. So they went to 2... I mean, the first I like that. It's more fair. I like exactly that. what I just said. Yeah. The first yeah. two were split one and one. Right. The next three will be split two and one. It'll be three to three. Right. So why do they get to go to the the lesser team's record and have the final game seven in their hometown when they did better in the regular? Who season? do you think is going to win? Cleveland. Uh, see, I say Warriors. Uh, that's what Dan said, and you said Cleveland at first. I said Cleveland at first, dude. Yeah. But I've watched the last. You listen two to Dan games. and change his mind. No, I haven't. I've I've watched the two last games, man. The Warriors are a much better team than. I thought, and not no, only that, they but are. What's his name for Cleveland? Got injured and is no longer there. So it's basically LeBron's oh, team. Go. It's LeBron's team it's now. It's two, and two, uh, one, one, and one. Is that right? That sounds right. Is that right? That's fair. Two here, two there. One here if you need it. One there, and then and then one back. Well, yeah. That would make more sense. I mean, but that, that would mean if they go to seven games, they finish in Golden State. So Golden State must have had a better better season. You would think. Than Cleveland. You, yeah, I'm not sure if how that's that works. The setup, I, it used to be two three two. Yeah, I, I know, know that. that for a fact. Yeah, because of the uh, video but, games, I would know it. But they me. they must have uh, changed it. So anyway, so Anyways, let's get these plugs out of the way, man. We'll, we'll get into it. By the way, Jesus. UFC had a awesome, awesome event. <laughs> well, we're on off topic right now. Before we get into pro wrestling, not that I mean we talk UFC and MMA here, but yeah, we tried UFC to. this past Saturday night, dude. What an awesome. Awesome show. They're calling Talk it one of the best shows. Top they're calling it one of the best shows in the history of as the UFC. As far as the top right? to bottom of action, not the star power, not the important finishes, but like as far as every fight having something that where you're like, whoa, like where you are right, right. in every fight. Yeah. yeah. And then it, it was almost like an, uh, a reverse escalator or something because every fight, the next fight, the fight would be over. And this is what a couple of reporters said. And even I think Dana said it. Every fight when it was over, you're like, there's no way someone's topping that. The next fight would top it. Well, I can't think well, of no that. Like, the next fight, someone top. You know what it. I like, thought? Holy shit! You know what I thought coming out of the pay per view? Like the one guy grabbed the microphone and he's like, "Dana, please, man." Was it a pay per view? It was. Uh, yes, it was a pay per view. No, it was a fight night. Or no, and the entire thing was on uh, yeah, FS1. It was in Brazil. FS1, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Fox Sports One. Dan Henderson. Um, but the one guy, you know, grabbed the microphone and he's like, "Dana." Please, man, what do I have to do, dude? Please give me a fight of the night bonus yeah, or a knockout a bonus of that. or something like yeah, that. It's like, them. I need this money for my family, this, that, and the other thing. And granted, after the show was over, Dana wasn't at the event. They had, what's his name, do the uh, post fight press conference. I would assume it's Dave Schaller, but I don't know. But they gave out two, they, did, they gave out one fight of the night, they gave out two knockouts of the night. Two bonuses for that. Well, these are the ones they so, report. I guarantee you, every guy on that card, as far as the winners at least, got a bonus. You think so? Well, they do that a lot. If it's a do they? if it's a show where it's tough to determine the knockout or the submission of the night, yeah, they stop doing submission. It's either, I think it's, I think it's they stop. fight of the night, fight knockout of the, night. of the night. No, fight of the night, performance of the night, performance of the night. That's what it is. I think that's it. It used to be fight of the night, submission of the night, knockout of the night, and then they changed it because that was too many bonuses to fight of the night. Bonus of the night, or uh, performance of the night. Right, 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 right. But what happens is, if it's hard to tell, they after the show they'll they'll tell them. Usually, they don't even ask for credit for it. Right. Like they don't like, oh, we gave everybody money. Like and everybody knows, oh, they're a good company. No, they off camera, away from the media, they'll tell the guys, yo, you guys killed it. We'll give you all a little something extra. Right, right, right. In their right. meetings, they do. That's it. cool. Yeah. That's so cool. I'm sure everybody, because there was every fight was like, how do you pick 
a better fight than that. I gotta say, a dude. Stop I gotta say, there. Dan Henderson. I've been saying over and over. You've heard me come on here yeah. every week, man. Every, not every week, but every couple of months when Dan Henderson fights, I said, dude, this dude is a beast, bro. Well, still knocking knows people that. right, but <laughs> still knocking yeah. people out. He's one of the best fighters of all time. I've been saying it the last few weeks. He's still good. Still knocking people yeah. out at forty six. Well, years they say old the power is the last is. thing to go. Yeah, and he's. Technically, he should not be fighting at 100. I think he's still fighting middleweight. Tim Bosch is a middleweight, right? Right. So that's 185. He fought most of his career at 205 in his prime. And when the last thing that goes is your power, and you're sucking yourself down to 185, and you're fighting fighting guys 20, 30 pounds smaller than you, you still pack a punch like a fucking 205-er, and you're hitting 185-ers with it. Of yeah, course, man. it's and, and you've got a strong punch like he's Dude, always he's had. killing it, man. I won't bet against that guy, no matter who he goes against. I will not bet it. And logic, I haven't. Logic, I haven't. Logic was, I almost bet Tim Bowie. He came in and asked me, Do you, I got Henderson. I said, I can't bet against Henderson. All logic, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're doing that now. I mean, before, there yeah. was a fight with Dan Henderson and somebody else, and you picked the other guy. It was maybe two fights ago. Name Dan Henderson's last couple He's of fights, if you remember. So I would have won. Henderson has? Yeah. I think he really? Won. I think he might have won his last fight. No, no, He's on a three-fight skid, and he's five and six in his last six fights. So he hasn't won any. The last guy he beat was Shogun, and Shogun was kicking his ass until he knocked him Maybe out. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking about. I remember his promo, too. He said it's good to be back on a winning streak. It, it, it feels good when the media and the reporters well, are counting streak, you out. Because the streak's more well, than right, one. Right, right. He hasn't won two fights in a row in years. But he said that a lot of guys were counting him out, this, that, and the other or, thing. Because yeah, his I, age. And I don't remember. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Dude. I think you're thinking of Robbie Lawler. I would always bet against right, like Roy Yeah, Lawler's been on a roll lately. Yeah, and I, I, would always, like, I would always like I would always make an excuse. Like, oh, he got lucky last time. He ain't winning this one and then he would win again and again and like I stopped doubting him like Andre Orlovsky that yeah, fucking guy everybody wrote yeah, off yeah Orlovsky too now he's knocking out big yeah, foot he's, who yeah. did he just knock out Travis Brown and yeah. like one of the best fights in heavyweight history there's okay, some guys right, that they, 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 they rebound man hmm. and Orlovsky just like Henderson's from like a generation maybe even two generations ago yeah way back way yeah back. he's yeah, before the yeah. ultimate yeah. fight he was like the fedor of the UFC at one point so an awesome show from uh, from Saturday night amazing dude, yeah. top to bottom alright here we go we're gonna get these plugs out of the way we're gonna get into Monday Night Raw from last night also gonna talk some news and rumors we've got WWE Money in the Bank coming up this Sunday night on pay per view god it's only been two weeks since the well, uh, it's funny, when I wrote the ratings post today, I had to write last week's Elimination last week's elimination Chamber post show, yeah. Drew blah blah blah, and then this week's Money in the Bank Go Home show, <laughs> right. like last week Crazy, was the post man. paper, and then this week's the pre-pay-per-view, like god, Crazy, man. Well, well I guess last week wasn't the post-pay-per-view Chamber show, right? That would have been the week before. It would have been the week before, no, right? No, it wasn't. Right. They did Chamber, and then they had two Rawls, and then Money in the Bank again. Chamber was the 31st. Yeah. yeah so it was. It would have been the go Yeah, uh, last yeah, week the was the post-show. Post show and, and this is the go-home show. And then the show. next yeah, week right. is the go-home show. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. too much, man. I, I think right. what happened was they did that King of the Ring special on the network, and it worked good. It worked good. So like, let's, well, let's do more of that. Right, right. Yeah. And, and they, they got rid of the Chamber. They announced Chamber at the very last minute, dude. Well, I mean, Chamber was a, was a concept they got rid of. Right, right, I right. Four King of the Ring, or maybe it was four Battleground or something. They got rid of it for another concept pay per view, which didn't have a concept, as far as I remember. And then they're like, "Well, let's make was it a network payback? special." Payback Battleground. I think it was Payback used to be Backlash, right? I can swear it was Battleground, but I, I don't know. Maybe it was Battleground. All right, no doubt. But anyways, um, so we've got Money in the Bank coming up. Uh, Scott Hall is back in rehab. Yeah, uh, it's not good. Well, it is I'm, good. It's good that he's in rehab. It's not good that he needs to go to rehab. It's good that... I just said it perfectly. It's good... (laughs) I I agree. Okay. It's good that he knows... It's good that he he knows... He can acknowledge he has a problem. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's aware now. He's not oblivious to the fact that he's slipping. He's fully aware. And he found out or or knew that, hey, listen, I'm I'm slipping. (laughs) I'm sorry. That was a dickhead thing. And he drinks on it. (laughs) <laughs> but anyway, uh, but the fact is, the, the fact is, like Boone said, he acknowledges that he has a problem, and Which he knew lot, that he, he fell off the wagon, and immediately, maybe not immediately, it could have been going on for a couple of months, but we saw that video posted on TMZ.com yeah. um, a couple of weeks ago, where he got kicked out of the, where he got kicked out of the indie yeah, show, yeah, yeah. and... Um, you know, it's it's the fact is that 
a lot of guys when they fall off the wagon they don't seek help well, and Hall immediately they, they said that he flew after the video surfaced on TMZ he flew to Atlanta Georgia met with DDP okay. and then DDP probably I'm guessing encouraged him hey listen you're not that far off the wagon it's only been a couple of weeks or a couple of months get in rehab and we'll start over and that's common with an addict well there's two two thoughts I have of that a I never got on the wagon and I've been drinking like crazy so I see a, a piss break before we go to the commercial in my future B no even fake lol or something uh-huh. I gave you a little <laughs> yeah, okay. alright anyways I just anyways uh, number two is if you're a celebrity or someone in the public eye, it's harder to admit, especially because if you're in this, if you're a celebrity, and I don't want to say Scott Hall's famous for being a fucking druggy fuck up, because he's not. He's famous for being an amazing wrestler, one of the best of all time. Blah, blah, blah. But they say he's got a great mind. Yeah, for the well, wrestling they don't say right? it. he does. He I, does. I, okay. I don't know the guy personally, but I've heard every interview he's done. I watched him growing up. He was like the guy. I'm really I'm smart. Up. He's clearly got it down. Okay, he, he knows what he's doing. Okay, he's damn good. He's he is good at it. Like anyway, a creative mind. Very like creative. creative right, he, right, right. he gets what's going on. He, he gets right. the whole thing. Like some people either get it or they don't. And right. there's like people like you that are in the middle that they kind of get it. And then every once in a while they're a little thrown off. Anyways. But anyways. <laughs> anyways. There's a... Uh, if you're a celebrity... <coughs> well, here's where I was going. The second part of his career. He was famous for wrestler. Good mind. Blah, blah. Second part of his career. He was famous. He was still in the headlines a decade after he had performed on TV as a wrestler. Why? Because he was in and out of rehab, in and out of jail, in and out of this and that, arrests, and blah, 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 blah. His life became a soap opera. <laughs> soap, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Maybe I need a soap, blah, blah, in my life, too. Apparently, I need to go away. But, uh, yeah, Boone is a functional alcoholic. Thank you, Steve. My favorite caller's got my back. But, anyways, yeah, he, his last couple of years, the main reason he's been in the headlines and in the people's conscience is because of he's a fuck up. He's a drug addict. He's an alcoholic. <coughs> and me and you can both relate to in our past. I wouldn't say we're an alcoholic now. We just get thirsty a lot. But all right, so he's famous for that. So it's hard for a guy like that that's famous all of a sudden for turning his life around. That's his most recent fame. Like the last year or two of his life has been wow, what a good job Scott Hall finally cleaned up. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's finally coherent. He's finally got his life together. Blah 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 blah. It's hard if you're famous for being sober. Well, like you know, Steve-O or somebody, and then you fall off the <coughs> wagon and you have to admit publicly. You know, I know, I know you guys were so proud of me and kissing my ass for the last two years for doing a good job, but I fucked up. Another it's hard to admit that because in your mind you're like, oh, I, wait, wait, I've been here before. I well, can control it, I can get rid of it you before, know what, though? before the public even knows it, and then they never have to admit it. So it's hard right. to admit it. And Absolutely. Gross. But another thing is, they did the Kickstarter campaign or the... That was the, for surgery. Whatever right? it was. It was for surgery yeah, and clean. everything else. And he went to it went he, he went to DDP's accountability. Well, that crib. was Jake actually. Did Scott do a Kickstarter? Scott crib? did it as well, man. You they, had the big Jake, story on Jake. Jake went into DDP's. Yeah, you know more about me than crib crib Jake's stuff. At first, Jake was there first, and they encouraged Scott Hall. So to Scott command. saw it worked and said, "Oh, I'm a bigger star and than Jake in the last up, ten years." They wound up picking <laughs> Scott up at an airport, and there's photos. You guys remember the photos? They had Scott. He arrived at the in Atlanta a airport in a wheelchair, yeah. and they brought him to the crib, and he cleaned himself up, and then they found out that he also needed surgeries as well. Of course. Couldn't bend down or anything else. They put videos yeah. up, and a lot of people donated money, and he got cleaned up, and it, everybody was really, really happy yeah. for him, really proud, proud of him. Yeah. And, um, you know, and he slipped up, man, and listen... That's part of the recovery process. It is. is it's going to be struggle. Scott put up a tweet today that said, I'm on the mend, but it's a struggle. I got news for you. I've seen your whole rant about that. I got news for you, Scott. And he's not stupid. He knows this. He's a very smart guy. You that struggle, that struggle yeah. is going to be for the rest of his life. Of course. Every single yeah. day for the rest of his life. And you know what? He may go to rehab this time. And he may come out of rehab, and he may do good for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, even a couple of years. But I wouldn't be surprised. As, well, here's as, the as quote. That is, this sounds. He may slip up yeah. again after this. 
But if he continues to seek help, I don't care. Somebody on my Facebook page says Scott Hall's been to WWE rehab, WWE sponsored rehab. What, like fifteen wow. times? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. That's something worth. Mentioning. You could, you could, you could go to rehab, WWE sponsored rehab. You can go fifteen times. You can go a hundred times. I don't care how many times you go. As long as you go. You're gonna slip up, man. You're gonna Especially slip up. Especially someone's paying and for a f- like the WWE pays for his rehab. But but the fact eh, that, that shows that the, that should show you that WWE cares. Yeah, I'm not talking about, about WWE. We're talking about Scott Hall. Yeah, it's almost fucked up to keep going and like if you're really trying. Because here's the quote, Miles Davis. But it's a struggle, man. It's and that's not, what I'm it's getting not, to. Miles Davis had the famous quote where he said, "They can get it out of your body or your blood. I forget which. They can get it out of your blood or your body. They can get it out of your body, but they can't get it out of your brain." So the struggle becomes mentally every day. You mentally, remember that right, you feel right. a lot better if you do a little of this, a little tootski of this, a little snortski of that, a little smokeski of this, a little sipsy of that. You know how you feel. You you can get it out of your system to where you're not physically <laughs> moaning right, and curled right. up in the fetal position. Right. But mentally every day it's like, well, I got nothing replacing that void in my brain. That was like 90%. And if you don't know an addict, 90% of your life, is whatever you're addicted to. And that if you're having a boring day, if nothing's going on, forget and you boring. Say, oh, yeah, like any just, kind of stress, just, work gets hard. Your girlfriend yells at you. Drink a whatever. beer or calm myself down. That any one beer turns into all. two beers. Yeah. And then you drink three, four, five, six beers, and you say, "Damn, I felt good yesterday." The next morning, you wake up uh, and say, "I, I want to feel like that. I want to feel like that again, man." Drink a couple more I'm beers. I feel I feel good. I'm and, disagreeing with you. And then it progresses. It progresses. No, it's not and a then, slow thing. It, for a real addict, if you fall off, you're full off gone. Like you, you're back in that world. There is no. Right, but that's, oh, I'm dabbling. I'm, I'm a former hardcore addict, and I I'll drink a couple beers tonight and try and control it. An addict knows you can't control your behavior. You're an addict. You don't. That's the whole point of being an addict. There's a lot of drunks in this life, right? Yeah. I classify me and you as drunks, but we're not alcoholics. We I think I think can we function like, without beer? Yeah, we don't drink during the day. That's my point. So we're not an alcoholic. We don't need it to live. We're drunks because we do drink a lot. There's a difference between really liking or really wanting an something or somebody, needing it. An addict is somebody that rolls out of bed in the morning time, and the first thing they do is sip a beer. You know what I mean? Is is grab a beer yes. and they sip a beer well, and they course, drink. Tiffany was an uh, an alcoholic. Right. We're at it. We were former addicts. Right. Tiffany was an alcoholic. Where she, if she went long enough without drinking, and they call it DT, she would start shaking. Oh really? I shit you not. And she would save open beers and put them in the fridge. Yeah. Somebody uh, at a party at your house, there'd be like eighteen beers where people didn't finish them. She would save those. Put them in the fridge. They'd be the most disgusting fucking things you've ever drank in your life. Right. Right. But they would stop her from. DTN. Right, and, the, and and when she wakes up in the morning, she's she drinks those beers. Almost right in the morning. I mean, no, she'll drink coffee and you know and and. But right in the morning time, I'd say by about noon good. she's drink. You know, noon yeah. one two p.m. Yeah, she's drinking. See, see, and that's that's what happens with alcoholics where they've got to do that. Where when they roll out of bed in the morning time, they immediately or you know yeah whether it be well the whole point after. of this whole thing was that you can't control it that's what people that make dumb like the people on your Facebook were making them stupid oh be a man and stop fucking but you don't know what you're talking about because there's no you think a grown man can't control something that he knows is wrong of course he would if he could but it's talk you're talking about a physical and mental addiction that you can wipe the physical but mentally and that's where it's like well grow up you you want a beer you can't have one but blah no, your body thinks it needs it. Your brain's convinced that that's the... Fa- it's a whole... You'd have to go through it to fully understand it. Right. And right. I don't suggest anybody go through it. All right. Believe me. All right. Um, so, let me get these plugs out of the way. Then we're going to get into uh, Monday Night Raw from last night. No other real big news over the past week There's or so. Uh, has broken. I mean, we've got the, uh, the 40 tough enough finalists. We got they, that. Uh, the Bully Ray bitching about the 3D. We got I'm a CM Punk with Hulk Hogan. Today. That's a story. Well, that's pretty crazy. I huh? took it as a... I didn't take it as serious as all the reporters. So I did. I, did. I took it as... No, no, no. Punk was serious. Punk was dead. You saw the promo he cut, right? At Hogan. The backstage of the I didn't NHL see the game? video. I didn't see the video. You didn't that watch he, it? I didn't watch the video that he cut on Hogan. Oh God, you got, backstage. The near the opinion don't matter because you didn't see him. Okay. Like, he's really like he's serious. passionate. Is he? Yeah. It's like him cutting a fucking I'm quitting promo, like his shoot I promo think, on a road pipe bomb promo. It's like I a think, pipe bomb about I, hockey, and it's I, like, dude. 
calm down. I Hogan did. probably knew you're a Chicago guy. You're a black woman. I, I mean, didn't fuck with Punk a little bit, and then Punk got super, I'll fucking kill you, you mispronounced his name, you're not a real hockey fan, like, Punk got way crazy about it, and I think Hogan was just playfully jabbing him, right, because I read the back and forth, Hogan didn't say anything that would make someone go, what the fuck did you say to me, motherfucker, like, and that's kind of how Punk took it, right, and it was weird, I don't know. All right, let's get these plugs out of the way, and then we'll get into it. Uh, the official home, the official website of WZR TV Tuesdays, WZROnline.com. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZRArmy, YouTube.com slash WZRArchive. We're on Twitter as well. All you got to do is go to WZROnline.com. Top navigation bar. It's got a social media tab. Drop down menu. It's got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube right there. WZR Online dot com for that. The official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. Got a live chat room on and in progress as always tonight. Lots and lots of people in there. How can they get there? They can go to www dot WZR Online dot com slash chat. WZR Online dot com slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people in there, as always, tonight. We are uh, going to run down Monday Night Raw. i got to be honest with you guys. I was uh, I was working last night. There were a lot of posts going up during Raw. I know Boone, I came in here, Boone didn't even have Monday Night Raw on, man. He was watching Seinfeld or Howard Stern or something like that last night. So I know uh, he didn't catch a lot of the show. But the main gist of things was uh, Seth Rollins continued... His feud with uh, J&J Security actually turned on them last night, which wound up leading to a match in, I believe it was the main event, Seth Rollins against J&J Security. The two of them uh, also continued the uh, the feud with Kane. I mean, it looks like eventually what's going to happen is, and it's already kind of happening, is the entire authority is going to turn against Seth Rollins, and he's going to be on his own. They're Eventually, they're going to have enough. And it's a very slow build. I mean, the last couple of weeks, JJ Security, you know, putting up with it, putting up with it, putting up with it. Kane, putting up with it, putting up with it, putting up with it. Finally, Kane's had enough and says, you know what, dude? <laughs> but you've got Triple H and Stephanie McMahon that are keeping them all together. So it's kind of like a, a very... It's coming. Eventually, there's going to be one week where everything, it's all going to blow up, and they're just going to beat the shit out of Seth Rollins, and that's it, right? Uh, but we'll have to wait and see, you know, when that happens. We've got money in the bank. We're going to have a uh, Kevin Owens and uh, John Cena rematch coming up this Sunday. I love the fact, I mean, like last night on Raw, you had Kevin Owens out there, you had Neville out there, and you had John Cena out there, right? And then, it's like, if you, NXT guys come to the main roster, and if there's one guy, I mean, everybody says, oh, it's John Cena. The thing is, John Cena is WWE's golden boy, right? He is the star of all stars in WWE. John Cena is the top guy in WWE. There's no doubt about that. Nobody, nobody comes even close. John Cena is WWE's guy. And to have guys like Neville and Kevin Owens out there, two up-and-comers, the next generation, if you will, who are going to be around for years and years to come, to have Neville and Kevin Owens out there getting the rub, as they say, by a guy like John Cena, there's no better, there's no better guy than to have that happen, or to, have the rub to, 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 to get the rub from, if I haven't seen it. Well, if I'm in the WWE roster and they're saying well, Matt Boone, uh, you, well, let me say one more thing, and well, then and then you go, and well, then you just go. Just a quick joke. Now you're gonna make it okay, not funny. Uh, no, All right. Go ahead. If there's a, no, it's not funny because I just said it's a joke. I was gonna pretend I was serious. Okay. If there's one person I could get the rub from in the locker room, and they say Matt Boone, you look up and down this roster list. Who would you like the rub from? What would make you a bigger star? I would say Lana. Well, Please rub me hard. Do you know what I mean? Like, let me get the rub from Lana. And she can rub and tug. And that would be my choice. That would be my selection. It would have been funny if it was a quick offhanded comment, Mr. Talkative. You had 20 minutes by yourself and you still, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
even if even if let you me repeat this the us, same way three different times. Even if times, you didn't tell us, hey, okay, you don't know that because you didn't. There's hear it. there's a joke coming, right? It was gonna there's be a, a quick joke pop, and then I had to explain it. It wasn't a very set good set it up. Of it course not. Not under those. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But yeah. even not under those yeah, circumstances, it, a quick, it wouldn't. You know, using the word rub, oh, he's the best person to get the rub from. And I was going to say, well, the best person to get the rub from is Lana, because she's fucking hot. That sucked. It wouldn't have been a... Uh, <laughs> no, but it would have cracked a smile from a couple of fucking... That things. sucked of where it were, whether it was She'd be the best years. at sucking, too. Yeah, probably. Rusev's getting that. I don't know about that anymore, man. Rusev's getting that. Not if WWE has You are right. so hell-bent. Listen, I get it. I get it. What? In the past... They have done things where there's real life. You there's, really don't. There's, well, there's real life couples in WWE. This is the most blatant okay. example of it ever. Wait a minute. There's, there's, there's real yeah. life couples mm-hmm. in WWE <laughs> where they show up to the arena. They travel together. The real life couples. They own homes together. Just go back to the Matt Hardy, Lita, Edge, that whole thing, right? That was a so, fluke. It's a bad example. So listen, there's been examples that in was WWE. Injured in on the, in where there's been real life couples in WWE yeah. being the corny children that they are, they come up with storylines and say, "All right, Rusev and Rusev and Lana are dating in, in real life. Let's throw Dolph Ziggler, a good-looking dude on WWE's roster. Let's pair Dolph Ziggler with Lana and split Lana from Rusev, and we'll see if it causes tension, real life tension." between Rusev and Lana. Clearly, that's what they're trying to do well, what here are you making fun with of you Dolph Ziggler. I'm not making, I'm not making fun you of just you. That's why, when you. That's why when you said you, you were... Your whole setup was boom things, blah, blah, blah. Here's Clearly, what they're doing. Clearly, that's what they're and doing. And just made my point. What I can say, what I Go can deep say... Go tongue Lana for 10 minutes. What I, what I can say is <clears throat> that I think, and this is where in the last couple of weeks you say that... You haven't outright said it, but do you think that after this whole storyline is over, are Rusev and Lana in real life? In real life? Well, it depends. Are they still together? Listen, I don't know them. I don't know how close their I bond was. I don't know how long they've been together before they started in WWE. Maybe they have a ten-year history, and it's like they nobody, do. They nobody do. can break this up. And we put it up on the website. Rusev and Lana have been dating well before they came into WWE. We put it on the website. TMZ recently put up an article that the two of them recently bought a house in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee, yeah. I believe it was. I know it's somewhere, Tennessee. Somewhere in, the, in the, somewhere in Tennessee, right? The fact that the two of them have bought a house together, they've been together for years and years and years now. I get what WWE's trying to do. How old are they? It's kind of an inside rib They're on the Rue 20s, Seven right? Lana try to split them up. I... So how long could they have been together? You, 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 I said if it's a ten year, nothing can break this. I don't know that it's ten years. It might I didn't be a say year or two. Yeah, 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 it's been longer that we put it up on the website. They've been, 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 been a year or two. That's so all right, they hooked up before WWE. That's two years and change. Rusev and Lana have only if been you count in NXT WWE maybe a year three or two. years, but yeah. On the main roster, I'd say we're going on two years for Rusev. Yeah. On the main roster, about two, two years. or three years, maybe three. No. You didn't think that long? He was a surprise in the Royal Rumble, like, last year or something. And he, remember? Time flies, man. It does fly. Time flies. Yeah. I don't know. Well, either way, my point being is, with the history of wrestling relationships, and when you mix storylines in with them, and go out of your way to have, pretend you have problems, blah, 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 blah. WWE is going so blatant with this one. Hey, let's find the best looking guy on the roster. The guy with the best reputation. Who's got Amy Schumer on Stern talking about what a fucking crazy fuck he is. Ziggler's a good looking dude. I mean, everybody can... He's a yeah. fucking very good looking cat. Absolutely. He's got a reputation of having a big dick that fucks well. That's what Amy Schumer sold on Stern. I'm a Stern fan. Alright. So she like put him over as like Zeus. Like he was a like, god. <laughs> like it was insane. Like I, I'm telling you right now, if I'm a girl, I'm like, oh, I gotta find out what that's about. Right. Like if you heard the same thing about a girl, like yo, she is a fucking... She's great. The second the lights go off, she's a different person. Right. You're not going to be a little curious of what she's really like behind the scenes in the bedroom? Of course. You're going to be like, let me find out what all the talk is about. So they're doing the reverse, and they're having, within the first, the very first week, they broke them up on TV. They said, they Dolph, go deep tongue kiss Lana right in front of her boyfriend on TV in front of millions of people. And then 
the next week. Hey, La hey, Dolph, go deep tongue Lana in front of Rusev and moons it. Like, that's his gimmick. He shoves his tongue in his girlfriend's mouth, and let's see how long it takes before Rusev says, either comes to us and says, hey, guys, this is really causing a problem in our personal relationship. Can you, you know what happens it? if he does that? Whoop, you get fucking shoved down the card. So they're waiting for that, or for one of those two to break and say, fuck this shit, I'm, you, it's over. They get off on it, like, yo, look, we, our fucking storylines just caused this beautiful couple to break up, and I guarantee you, and this is where you can rail on me, because this is where I'm completely speculating, but I think Vince, or somebody that's important, has a horror on for the fact that Lana, it's one of those where you see girl, you see a couple coming down the mall holding hands, and you're like, how the fuck did that douchebag get that girl? And I guarantee you, Vince, Triple, somebody's like, how the fuck did this fat Russian fucking bearded behemoth get the sexiest Dallas Cowboys cheerleader of all time that's fluent in multiple languages? How the fuck did he do that? Let's fuck it up. And uh, that's where you can rail on me. Let's try to fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, let's try and fuck it Now, if you wanted to dig on me on that, I'd be like, I'm completely speculating and guessing. But I, I guarantee you I'm right. I agree with Almost, you. Almost, not even because they care, but just for fun. Like, let's see if we can break Absolutely. them up. Absolutely. Like an exactly, experiment. That's yeah. exactly what they're doing. Let's see if we can fuck this up, because Rusev, <laughs> he don't deserve Lana. Nah. Let's like, be honest. How the fuck did he pull that off? And WWE writers, we know this, man. You guys see this the dumbest shit on t TV every week. And if you're smart enough to know, you know what they're doing. You know, little ribs here and there, where, like, last night, for example, and you can rail on, saxophone. You can rail on me for this. There's oh. a backstage segment, right? And it's Seth Rollins, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and they're talking about Instagram photos. Well, that was... These photos... Real quick, it was the pink saxophone. There was a picture of Dean Ambrose playing a pink saxophone. Pink saxophone? And Triple H and Stephanie both had to make little underhanded quick comments that yeah. you would, if you didn't know, you wouldn't even caught it. You wouldn't have caught it. But I caught it because right. I'm like, oh, right. clearly they looked at these pictures before they went on the air and like this was the one everybody was making fun of. Right. So they had their little lines that they right. had the writers write on. But it was know. like, Seth Rollins is cutting a promo last night and he's like, oh my God, these photos are all over Instagram. Y'all remember... Just a couple of months ago, with Seth Rollins and his wife, and the NXT diva, and and the wife went on Instagram and put these photos all over Instagram, and she's railing on him, saying, you cheated with my husband, or we were about to get married, this, that, and the other thing. All these photos on Instagram, it's little things like that, where I think WWE Creative gets off on shit like that, dude. We lost the chat room. We lost. They're the completely in their own world, like telling shitty one-liner jokes to each other and seeing. <coughs> like, like they're completely not even paying. Attention. But you know what I'm saying, <laughs> last night? You I know was, what I'm saying. You with, lost with, me because I was paying attention to that. I with Instagram, these photos are all over <coughs> Instagram, and you all know what happened last night with yeah. with you know. No, I don't know what your, your point was though. I know that they had the whole Instagram segment throughout the show where here, let's catch up with Dan, Dean Ambrose, see what he's doing now. Right. Right. Well, what's your point about it, though? I didn't catch that. Just ran that down for like the last two minutes, right. dude. Well, With the whole next NXT can't diva, in a second. the NXT diva dude and the wife and the split, the whole affair and the rumors and the photos leaking on Instagram, all this stuff just a couple of months ago. Come on, Rollins with the the porn pictures and all that. Rollins, your where are you connecting those two? That's where I'm lost. Forget it. Forget oh, it. I'll watch the archive. I don't you know guys work. <laughs> if you, if I you guarantee guys it makes no it. sense. So for everybody that's like, I understand what Boone's saying. What the fuck? All right. About? What else happened on a uh, Monday Night Raw last night? Uh, God, if it's not the, the Cena Owens opener was worse. Run him down real quick, right? Yeah. Like it wasn't Rollins and the Authority for one week, and then guess who it was? The other person you said it would be. You said if it's not Rollins or the Authority, it's Cena. I said no, no, no. They're done with Cena opening Raw. He's the mid guy now. And then guess who opened Raw last night? Oh, Cena. Then, then I even heard you, Jacob. Look, it's just, you know. I was like, oh shit. So uh, not having on yet. Cena comes out, uh, says that you know, basically plugs money in the bank uh, this Sunday night. Money in the bank. He's gonna face Kevin Owens again, and uh, it's gonna be his time to prove it's that the Earth. most anticipated rematch. In WWE, is that what they call it? That's what Cena kept saying. Oh God, dude! It just happened last week, but it's already everybody can't wait to see it again. More so than than Rock Cena two, Austin Rock three, 
I could go on forever. <laughs> the most anticipated rematch. The third match of NXT, or uh, Kevin Owens' main roster career, is the most anticipated rematch of all time. Yeah, we had a... Uh, did have a oh, great match on Raw, though. Owens wound up uh, coming out here, basically called John Cena delusional. They went back and forth yes. with each other. Dude, delusional I mean, was, was really tagline. good. Yeah. I gotta say that John got the best of Owens again last did night. Did you think man. so? I thought so. Here's right. why I'll disagree. I'll say... It was 50-50. Owens didn't get the best of Cena. But Cena got into that goofy comic book, cartoony character, comedy persona that he has sometimes, and he lost me. Like, I didn't even hear a word he said after that, because I was like, oh, God. He's like, so what do you guys think? There's Mr. Kevin Owens. And then he starts, like, acting like he's the ring leader, fucking Bob Barker of the Price is Right crowd in front of him. Like, like he's like, t it, when he gets going like that, I don't even really hear what he's saying. Right, right. But Owens, he seems nervous or, like, unsure of himself. Like, he needs more confidence. He doesn't have the voice, you know, the bass in his voice. That, too. Of guys. He's very monotone. Yeah, like, right. he doesn't emphasize words with, like, like more passion behind this word than that. Like, right. very flat. Yeah, so there was something about it. But I didn't think, like, Cena gobbled Owens up or anything. He had a great right. he had a great ending. I forget what it was, but he finished strong. Cena. Right. Uh, so uh, Owens is basically out there saying, uh, instead of you defending the United States title every week, uh, why don't I defend the NXT yeah. title? Let's I'm do gonna an NXT open challenge. I'm gonna do an open challenge. NXT titles on the line. What right. Cena said. This brings out. Uh, uh, before before it brings out, Cena says, "All right, let's go. I accept." Right, right. And I was and like, no, 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 we're fighting this Sunday. Uh, I'm not fighting you right now. So, so Neville, Neville, shit. Neville winds up coming out here, another NXT guy, yes. right? And, well, they let uh, him choose. Which one right. does he want? Neville winds up coming and uh, basically was, like Boom said, was able to choose whether he wanted to face off for the NXT title yes. or for the U.S. title. And uh, His answer was, I already fought Cena for the U.S. title and I got a DQ win or whatever it was. And he was like, what? I got him. And his big beef with Owens was, I'm a former NXT champion too, and I don't walk around acting like I'm the best of all time, this and that, and you do, so let me beat you for your belt. Basically, said Owens is real like cocky. Yeah, right. and that and he's so, already, he's already new, done uh, the US Open Challenge, so right. I'll do the NXT Open Challenge. So we had uh, Kevin Owens defeated Neville. Uh, it was an amazing was match. A very good match. Fucking great very match. Very good match between those two, man. It was awesome. Neville, I'm starting to think they didn't promote him that well in NXT because he seems like a bigger deal on the main roster. I in NXT he was always a great worker but he didn't have a character or personality of any kind really. He doesn't really have that in WWE. He doesn't, doesn't really bit. have the look on... I, I mean when I look at him it's just... just reminds me of another... I think he's jacked and like even with... Oh, like a Bo Dallas. I mean obviously they're doing more with Neville than they are with Bo Dallas. Oh, this is how they started Bo Dallas out too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. They gave Bo Dallas a shot. They didn't do anything with him. Yeah, and then when he didn't yeah. get over on his own after two weeks, he said, "All right, you're a jobber." I don't know that the that yeah. the that the fans are sold on Neville just yet, though. No, no, no I'm I talking about know. me. I'm not talking about what the fans. Right, say. right. Yeah. But they Maybe. love that red arrow finisher by, uh, well, by yeah. Neville. I mean, that's and his awesome. entrance is cool. His yeah. finish is good. So they always say, like in a rap song, a movie, a TV show, a book, anything that has a beginning and an end, you start strong, mm -hmm. you finish strong. And try and keep it interesting. And so that's all that's really important. His entrance is amazing. Mm -hmm. His finishing move is probably the best in the business. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle, he's able to keep it entertaining because he's damn good. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. he falls apart is they did a little. He had a little talking piece before they did the match. Where he See, was, he's not that good. The there accent. Yet. Right. I don't want to throw off anybody that's got a UK or an Australian accent. There's just something about it. Like I've heard, like Conor McGregor's got the most thick Irish accent I've ever heard in my life. And guess what? Conor McGregor is the most uh, charismatic, entertaining guy in the business. But you know what? Neville has the accent, which I can look past. Obviously, if Conor McGregor is my favorite entertainer, I can look past the accent. There's just He doesn't have any charisma. He's very bland and boring, but he just happens to have a different voice while he's doing it. So it's the same as like a boring American. That but has you know what? Charisma. You got a guy like Seamus that has the accent? I don't think he's that entertaining either. Yeah, but he's... he's well, so you get what I'm saying then. He's up at the. I get. I get what you're yeah. saying, but you he's have also a different example. Mine's Connor. Seamus. You're Seamus. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. Connor is awesome. He's, dude. he's, he's the best in the business. You MMA, get, WWE. You can get past the accent, of course. And, 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 and Seamus is another one, man. Where in WWE, I didn't like the accent at first. I didn't like 
it, but now it, it grows on you. And Connor's maybe the they, same accent. Maybe They're both they can, Irish, right? Maybe they can do that with Neville, and eventually he'll grow. Where's Seamus from? He's from Ireland, right? Ireland, yeah. yeah. Connor yeah. McGregor too, Dublin. Yeah. Um, we had Nikki Nikki Bella defeated Summer Rae. Actually, I think Neville match. is too. From Ireland. From, from Ireland. Ireland. Prince Devon. Or, uh, or Australia. Finn Waller. Yeah. Australia. Or is it Australia? Maybe. I'm not sure. I could I'm swear sure. there's like a click. Like Drew Galloway, Drew, Drew McIntyre. Right. Sheamus, and then Prince Devitt, Fergal Devitt, or right. Baller, I think were the three Irish dudes. Oh, uh, there was a, I believe it was like <coughs> Kane. Was it Kane here? I think Kane came out, cut a promo talking about that tonight, oh the guys God. in the Money in the Bank match this Sunday night at the Money in the Bank pay per view were all going to be in singles matches. Huh? Every person in the match came out. Yeah. Even one that wasn't in it. Our truth came out and said, This is why I'm going to win. Like, everybody had their yeah. turn. This is why right. I'm going right. to win. And Kane was trying to make a point, kind of like WZR when he gets going and I and I interrupt him. Although it's the reverse this week and he doesn't even realize it. Because every word he says is very important. So, shh, listen. But, anyways, yeah, Kane kept trying to make a point and, and somebody's music would hit. Yeah. It's the same well, time every week, too. What is screwed. going on? I don't know. This computer cut off. Yeah, it's the same time too, though. Like, goddamn. All right. Oh, is man. it good for forty-five minutes and then goodbye, and it'll shut off before it even loads up this time. Then we it'll had it up until this point. It'll take like four tries. Uh, we got like five minutes before we go to the break. I wasn't yeah. gonna run down uh, uh, raw from top to bottom. I mean, we're gonna talk about the main event. Um, I mean, like uh, what we're talking about right now is every guy in the Money in the Bank match. Yeah, they came out and interrupted out. Kane, and then our truth came out. I told you, and tried to do it, and Kane had to say, "Dude, you're not even in the match." And he's like, "Oh, really? I'm not." Right. And then eventually he's like, "Oh, oh, my bad." And then he left and went back to But it, and then the next black guy, which made it kind of seem racist for a second, what well, it was like, "Oh, there's obviously a black guy in this match." Well, it's not our truth. Like, I don't, I'm not racist at all. You know that. I won't get into why, but but like after our truth was shooting away, and then Kofi Kingston came out with a new day, I'm like. Oh, so was the joke supposed to be like, oh, we know there's a black guy, jobber, or mid-carter guy in this match, but we forget which one it is. <laughs> and then, like, because I actually, while our truth was speaking, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's in the match. I forgot. And then when they said he's not in the match, I didn't even, I wasn't even sure it was a joke until he went away. And even when he went away, I was like, is that part of his character where he doesn't know things? And then when the New Day's music hit came and Kofi Kingston, I was like, oh, oh, it's Kofi. He's the ladder match guy. Right. I swear to God, I thought it was our truth because he came out. And then when they did that segment, I'm like, is this a joke or part of our truths character that he doesn't get what's going on? Around? And I watch every week, so I don't know how I missed it, but I was confused for a second. Yeah, was, they they brought out all the guys for Money in the Bank, and then like I, I talked about when uh, when Boo was in the bathroom earlier, and they're basically Seth Rollins is pissing everybody in the Authority off, right, dude? He's pissed off Kane already, dude. Yeah. He's pissed off J and J security last well, I, night. I heard you, and I disagree with you on this. Did you? You think they're all going to eventually beat him down? I think eventually. I, I mean, think it's, it's not going to be any time soon. Uh, it's, it's a big setup, and it has been and week after week. Back, yeah. it, it has been week after week where they try to swerve you into thinking that, all right, everybody. We've had enough of this guy, yeah. Well, right, we've had enough. And then at the end of the night on Raw every week, they all come out. They save him. And they save him. Yeah. But eventually. That's enough gonna too end. much, but they got to really. That's gonna if end. If that's where they're going with this, they need to do a better job of building it up. Which, by the way, on Raw they did a decent job, but for a go home show, you never know what that means. But like, I was always thinking while he was doing J and J security, eventually there's gonna be this big reveal where it's like, ah, we're not really trying to beat him, or Triple H would come out, or Kane would help him because he was at ringside, or they would just lay down after a while and pin him. Like I was expecting the big reveal of, of course we're not enemies. You know, we're all part of the authority. Right. Because they tried doing it one week as the go-home show for a pay-per-view where they pretended like everybody was pissed at Rollins, and then when he, it was him and Orton. And then when he came out to fight Orton, before he even started going down the ramp, he stopped at the top of the stage, and then all of a sudden, Behold the King of Kings on your knees, punk. Bah! And the whole fucking authority came out with him after they spent the entire night doing backstage segments where one one he pissed everybody in the authority off. I think they even started the show where he dressed down every single person in the ring that was in the authority. Yeah. And yeah. pretty much told him, this is why you suck, this is why you... And they all like, well, fuck you, I'm going to kill you, and you're dead when I say... And by the end of the show, they all came out behind him, I have, we got you. Right. I right. thought that's what last night was, but they ended the show with him losing to J&J Security, 
J&J leaving with Kane, laughing and mocking him. Mm-hmm. Of course, Ambrose ran in behind him, hit Dirty Deeds, took the title back. But the whole time, J&J security and Kane is laughing and walking up the ramp. It's not like after a while they came back and beat up Ambrose and said, no, we still got his back. Like, uh, they left the show going off the air last night with fans having the impression that there is friction here. There's so friction. that's where right. maybe you might be right. Maybe they're doing it, but if they are doing it, they're not doing it right because they should have built it up for weeks where you slightly, like, you, you allude to the fact that they're getting sick of this fucking guy. Don't I think do it all in one night, because nobody's going to believe it, because you've done the same thing before, and it turned out to be bullshit by the end of the night. Right. So right. do the gradual couple weeks, you know. And I, I think probably next week you're going to have the authority once again open up Monday Night Raw, come out, address the action, unless they do it on SmackDown well, here's the, tonight. Here's the problem. The pay-per-views is Sunday. Yeah. So you're either going full blown with it, and you're leaving him out to dry, and he loses the title to Dean Ambrose, right? Or you save him, and you reveal it's all been a big fuck you. We've been just setting up Ambrose, or Ambrose or Rollins wins without any help, and then how do you even do that storyline anymore? Because he just proved he doesn't need you guys. He did it on his own, right? So you got three options: Ambrose is new champ, Rollins retains without any help, or they help Rollins, and they realize and they reveal that they're not against him at all. Right. So there's no way for your storyline to play out to where they're going to get sick of him and, and, and turn on him. Because they can't turn on him because they're not supposed to be anywhere near the ring this Sunday. So if they come out and fuck him, that's the same as coming out and help him. They're not supposed to, it's supposed to be what can you do on your own. That's the whole point of the storyline. Right. Let's see, you, you say you can do it on your own, you're on your own. Do it on your own. So either he does it on his own and he proves he doesn't need him, he loses the title and blah, 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 or they come out and help him. I don't see anywhere where they come out and fuck him, because even if they come out and fuck him, they're not proving that he can't do it on his own. They're proving that if we fuck you, you lose. Right. So right. it's kind of really complicated if they're trying to get to where you're going, which is let's show everybody that we're fed up with this guy. Yeah. We'll and there have been rumors of Rollins turning face, so I see, I see where you're coming from, but we'll I don't see. believe the rumors. We'll see what happens at uh, Money in the Bank uh, coming up this Sunday night on pay-per-view. All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a, uh, a quick commercial break. We're going to come back on the flip side. going to be taking you our rapid-fire questions. We're going to uh, put rapid-fire up on Facebook. We'll come back. you got to submit them during the break because, we're like I said earlier, we're going to get out of here early tonight. So we'll come back. All that's left in our numero dos oh. is your rapid-fire questions and your live phone calls. So... We'll load up the phone lines. We'll take rapid fire in our numero dos. Uh, submit. Tell them where they can submit simple. rapid fire you can questions. Submit by going to facebook.com slash. What is that track? Mm-hmm. <laughs> facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. That's facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Once you get there, the top post will ask you for your questions and comments for the rapid fire segment. And hour number two. Once we get to hour number two, we will answer them in a rapid fire style fashion. This is how you get involved in the show. This is how you get your questions answered, your topics discussed. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. All right, uh, we'll be back after the break. Rapid fire and your live phone calls. Then we're going to get out of here. So, make sure you submit the rapid fire questions as soon as we put the post up in about one minute from now. You're listening to WZR TV Tuesdays with Matt Boone and Ryan Clark. We'll be back right after this. It's not going to be a full hour. We're, uh, we're tip off, by the way. It just happened right now. There you go. Give everybody a reason to tune out. <laughs> Right when we were uh, coming in here, the uh, Hey, the guys, NBA. in case you were bored watching this piece of shit show, something good just came on TV. Change the channel. The NBA uh, playoff just tipped off right now with the uh, with the Warriors and the Cavs. Game three is going to be a good one, I'm telling you, man. This series is pretty fucking nasty. So Don't worry. Our primary audience is males 15 to 30. So we're not going to lose any to the no. NBA Finals Game 3. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, we'll load up the phone lines. We'll take a couple live phone calls, and we will... Do I need to load the phone lines up here? Yes, if you could. Right. That would be excellent. We'll load up the uh, the phone lines. I'll do one last refresh on this rapid fire. 
and we'll get these questions out of the oh. way. If you guys want to call us live, it's going to be, we're going to be here for about the next 15, 20 minutes. We'll get through the rapid fire questions and then we'll get through the, uh, the live phone calls if you guys want to call us live. Give us a call tonight. It's 518-712-3070. 518-712-3070. One more time. Okay. 518-712-3070. Look at the camera and look at the top of my head. Ready? Life. Yeah, it looks like you're bald, I know. It's when bad! I, the light shines on my head, so I look like I'm balding really bad in the middle of my whole entire head. I swear I've got the thickest fucking hair you've ever seen. <laughs> That's need to point out, I'm not anywhere near like that if you look at me in person. It's insane. It's the same thing when I when I take my hat and put it over my face, too, with yeah. the ball, and it looks like I'm completely bald. And uh, granted, Where? I am balding. I am balding a little bit. I Why mean, do you look clearly... bald? You look like a guy wearing a hat. I look like a guy balding. Well, this does not happen when you look at me off camera. I'm that's telling why you. I said when I pull my hat down over my face and I do the thing towards the camera, oh. it looks like I'm bald. Well, you shave your head, so of course you're bald. I mean, you can't tell how bald because you shave your head. Right. So it's not the same thing. Right. I've got a full thick head of hair, but based on this computer, you would think I'm fucking losing my hair like crazy. Yeah, it, it looks That's like not the case. I know. All right, we'll uh, start taking these live on 8307. I'll call your live on easy RT. Yeah, Ryan. What's up, man? Last, last night on uh, the wrestling news, you banned Eric Rowan. Yes, I you did. because he, I did because he was going crazy during uh, Raw. Come on, bro. He hung up. Get the fuck out of here. What was that even about? I don't even know. I, there was a guy on uh, on EWN last night during Raw. Name Aaron Rowan? Was just, yeah, right, right. He was, was spamming. Trolling left and right. Trolling Surely that was right. him, So, by the way. It must have been him. Of course. But anyways, yes, I, I banned the guy yeah. because he was trolling, and I, I banned him. You did your job. All right, five one eight seven one two three zero seven zero. That's what I'm supposed to do. If somebody's trolling. That's my point. You, you got a ban him. Job and hey, how dare you do your job? And not only that, but the guy threw out a taunt and said, "You ain't got the balls to ban me," or something like that. Or this, this now, be honest. Kind of fake and I, and Were you thinking about banning him before he dared you to? I wasn't. But then a bunch of people came up on there and said, "This guy needs to go. This guy needs to be banned." All right. So I said, "Fuck it. He's banned." Then I banned him, and now he's pissed. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? Hey, guys. It's Stephen Gravig in the chat room. Oh, what's up? shit. What's My up, brother? Caller, what do we got? All right, brother. I got a joke for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the show right here because I know you guys want to watch the game. So. Please do. <laughs> All right. Uh, why did Cinderella get kicked off the softball team? Why did what get kicked off the softball Who? Why? What? Okay, let me, let me repeat it. Why did Cinderella get okay. kicked off the softball team? All right. Why did Cinderella get kicked off the softball team? Something about a slipper. Something about a punk. I don't. Why did she get kicked off? Uh, because she ran away from the ball. <laughs> she ran away from the ball. Do you know the Cinderella story? <laughs> no. She goes to the ball and the, she turns into the princess, and then after the ball's over, the like the fucking limo turns into a pumpkin. Oh, like the dancing, like a dancing ball. A ball yeah. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I got it. See, I don't know the Cinderella story, so that. Well, he had a great one in the chat that I know. I know that one. I, what the fuck? I can't even remember. It was such a blatant one-liner. I don't know. If he's got another one, I'll let him do it. Ooh, one more. What else you got, Steve? Okay. Um. Why did the cookie go to the hospital? The cookie. Yeah, why did the cookie go to the hospital? Why did the cookie go to the hospital? Because he had a chip uh, uh, well, and a chip in his head. I don't fucking... Because, because he felt crummy. He felt crummy. crummy. <laughs> I like that one. Crummy. That was pretty good. That was brainless like that. enough for Mr. Clark to get. Ah, oh, suck it. What was the one you were telling in the chat? I've seen that joke a million times, and I was like, I hope he doesn't call in with that. Which one, that brother? Was... Which one? Which one, Boone? Oh, God. How many jokes did you tell in the chat tonight? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, buddy, I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I saw one that was, like, such a blatant one-liner that I've seen a million times. I'm like, God, I hope he doesn't do that tonight. Cause that was hey, I got a joke. Yeah. Why did the cookie go to the hospital? Because he was feeling crummy. <laughs> oh, shit. You like that one? It was a little too soon to re <laughs> recycle. Speaking of recycling, Joe, how do you recycle a condom? What are you talking about, recycled? How do you recycle a condom? 
Oh, God, I've heard this one from you. Uh, I just said it the last two you, weeks uh, in a row. You guys didn't got it yet. Yeah, I don't remember. Hold on, let Steven answer for it. Steven, how do you recycle a condom? Uh, no clue, brother. Seriously? Do you not listen to this show? I've said it the last two weeks. I don't know. Either. I guarantee you go to the chat. Nobody room. listens to you Someone's on here, got man. It. Nobody listens to He's you. He's not going to go to the chat. Here, I guarantee you. Well, there's a three-minute delay, so what are we going to uh, do? You're right. All right, there's a delay. Minutes. You turn it inside out, and you shake the fuck out of it. Oh, oh yes, yeah. that's what it was. I got a joke for you. Hey, guys, yeah. hey guys you... I got one more for you. All right, one give more. me. All right. Uh, why did the rapper carry an umbrella? Why did the rapper carry an umbrella? Because Cause uh, it was raining dollar bills. Dude, that's strip a, club. Yeah. Strip club. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go in the strip club. Before. Rain down dollar bills. Before yeah. Steven gives the punchline, I, I want you to. Now, now that you I got know, it, yeah. right, so you just figured out the punchline. Tell the joke as a sentence and see if it's funny. Go ahead. Why did the rapper go to the strip club? Why, Ryan? Because it was raining. They rain dollar bills. Steven, Umbrella. what's the joke, please? Stevie, what's the real joke, please? Yeah, I got it. Um. Oh my god, I just lost it, brother. I just lost Why it. Because it was raining down no, no, dollar no. bills. There's nothing funny Doc about that. There's nothing funny. And he's so embarrassed. He's so embarrassed he doesn't want to no, say no, it. No, no, no. I guarantee you. Because it was raining down you dollar bills. You forget your one-liners. Right. Boom. Why the rapper take a blow? What's the punchline? Got him. <laughs> oh, it's for, for drizzle. For drizzle. It was for, for drizzle. drizzle. See, oh, there's drizzle. an actual one. joke there. Not All like, right. oh. Rappers right. are known for making it rain money, so he brought an umbrella because, I think it's, mine was better. because it's raining money. Yours was factual. There I was think no mine was joke. better. Mine like, was better. Idiot. I like it. Steven, I love you, man. We love you, brother. All right, guys. Have a good <laughs> I got it. You put your fist on. I'm not bumping fists on Alan. <laughs> I didn't ask you to bump my fist. No, Wayne man is talking fist. about how it rains money. So the reason he brought the umbrella is because it's about to rain money. Got him. You're answering it like it's a real. Got him. You're answering it like it's a real question. There was a clear fucking joke at the end of it, dude. Got him. Alright. Oh, I know go. because rappers say it. I'm gonna make it rain, and that means. Make it rain money like Floyd Mayweather at the club the other night with yeah. the strippers. Yeah. That video? Pretty fucking good. That actually made headlines. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Anthony Remy, who do you think will win the Money in the Bank ladder match? Well, whoever's going <coughs> to win is going to have to bring an umbrella because it'll be raining money from the fucking briefcase. I would say... That's funny. He, the didn't, person, laugh he didn't laugh because he was being made fun of. That's funny. The person that I want to win Money in the Bank is... Dolph Ziggler. Is he even in? Yeah, Who he's will in. win yeah. Money in the Bank? Think about the guy Roman that Reigns came out. Roman Reigns is going to win it. Probably Roman Basically, Reigns. all you got to ask yourself when a Money in the Bank match happens is who do you think WWE wants to have a title shot that they're guaranteed, the future, right? and they're guaranteed to win pretty much. Unless they want to really fuck someone. Right. Who are they giving the title to next? And then you look at the list of contestants and you say, well, shit, they got to do it within the next year. This guy's not going to be ready within a year. This guy's not... Maybe they give it to him in the next I'd year. I'd say Dolph won't Ziggler, but hasn't Ziggler already had it? Ziggler had it. He cashed right. in right. the night he after WrestleMania in. like three right. years ago. And right. it was like the biggest pop in the history of Raw, and they took the title off. Well, they they, they got it right off. Yeah, of right, course. right. Steven Gravick. i got to get him to say the pronunciation of his name next time. Again. I was thinking of that last week. Because we say Gravick, but there's no way it's Gravick when it's G R B. A I think it is. Even with the accents and everything else. Or How do you the, get uh, Grabaic the when there's a V in there and there's no A between the G and the R? Oh, ask them. Alright. Well, is it me? Okay. You got to turn. I can't even see. I th I feel the Kevin Owens storyline is, is the only interesting thing in WWE right now. Do you agree or disagree? I, listen, I just said this last, I think it was just last week to my boss, Shalik. Who said he's gonna watch? And I told him he's in a bad mood. I'm gonna fuck with you. So he said, oh, "I'll check it out." So I can tell you're in a bad mood. I've been, I've been able to tell days, but you've yeah. been in a bad mood all day. Which it doesn't is why seem I'm a little bit much. nervous to come on here doesn't tonight. Seem as and much. I kind of regret doing so. Well, when I'm on camera, I'm I'm pretty good at camouflage. I mean, they would have no idea I'm as miserable as I am the second. You are a light. miserable so, fuck today, man. Yeah, well, you, you are too. But you know, you I'm, know. I'm we're I'm miserable about fine. different things. No, you're miserable about other stuff. I'm just not miserable about the same shit as you are. Right. But, uh, yeah, I just told Shock the other day, I could swear it was just it, like, recently, where I was like, you know what, 
since Punk left, since Heyman left, there's it's three hours of shit every Monday. So the only thing really <laughs> worth watching is Kevin Owens. Like, yeah. And I didn't even like Kevin Owens before he came up. But, but. Caller, you're live on W Zero TV. What's up? Hey guys, I have two questions. First, first one's easy. I just want to know what does WZR stand for? WZR? That's a great question, Ryan. What does it stand for? It stands I, for a website I used to a run for ten years plus radio, and then he doesn't want to mention. We'll it say anymore. we'll say that it stands for Wrestling Zone Radio. There and you we'll, go. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. That's a big difference. Fair enough. And uh, my my second question is, I don't know if you guys talked about it at the beginning, but. Uh, you guys covering the 3D thing, the Team 3D, uh, and the, um, you know, them using the move on Raw last night. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Actually, David Hadley uh, brings that up as the uh, next rapid fire question. He basically, or question, he basically That's said horrible. that. Uh, uh, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. We're going to answer it right now. Uh, thoughts on Bubba Ray Dudley bitching on Twitter about Rowan and Harper using the 3D. Uh, they've been using the Dudley Death Drop. That's the first thing they did on TV, I think. As, as far as Raw or Smack, like a big show. Right. Maybe right. Smack. I don't watch Smack now. But they've been doing it at, uh, at house shows and oh, things like that. Weeks. And uh, yeah. Bubba basically came out and, you know, emphasized the word balls on, on Twitter. Yeah. Basically saying WWE. Do you have the balls to call us, and we'll let you show. We'll let you. We'll, we'll show you how it's done the right way, or the way we do it, or yeah. something like that. Tough guy, and, bullshit. Uh, he really thinks yeah. he's a tough guy. So the question remains: Is are they selling selling an angle, uh, and they're going to do something between the Dudley Boys and Harper and Rowan, or uh, is that just Bubba? Being a well, tough guy, clearly that. like you said, and yeah. it seems like Bubba just being a douchebag. Well, yeah, if he years. was in working relationship at all with them when he was doing those teases for the NXT events in Philly and Albany, right? It wouldn't have been Tommy Dreamer at all of them. One of them would have been Bully, and they didn't even want him for that. So for some reason, on TV, and they had him at the Royal Rumble. He got the biggest pop of the night. They still didn't follow up on this. Yeah. Jackie, right? yeah. Jackie, what's going on? <laughs> Not so much. What's going on with you guys? Uh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Um, I saw what happened to Lana. Uh oh. Oh boy. And I want to know if she's okay. She is. Because there's literally nothing wrong with her. It was completely fake. Uh, but yeah, she's okay. It was all storyline, <laughs> and uh, we know that that Rusev came out on uh, on Twitter today and laughed at her and he said, told her to ha, ha, run ha. or hide or something. He was like threatening her. But that's all storyline, and she of is one hundred percent fine. You know, they did the backstage fallout segment last night. They did. The um, there was a video where they were icing her her ankle. ankle. It was or, the same like, thing they did at WrestleMania. If you remember, she got knocked off the apron and her ankle hurt. Yeah, yeah. And they took her shoe off, and the medics were like, are you okay? Does it hurt if I turn it this way? Does it hurt if I turn it that way? Let's carry you out, because you can't put any weight on it. Like, it was the same thing. But she's 100% fine. Yeah, and, it was uh, completely it's fake. All, Rusev is the one the who's got the line. fucked up foot. His foot's yeah, broken. Yeah. But in the storylines, Lana's foot's broken. Right, right. And they all, just reversed it. All the storyline angle. Mm -hmm. I know, it's just that, you know, I saw that. I remember finding this clip of one of Randy's old matches when Melissa's ankle got hurt by Andre and I'm like, oh no, 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 don't let her be hurt. Don't no. let her be hurt because, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still a little bit worried about her and Rusev on screen and off screen. I, I'm still hoping I get to meet them on the 15th along with Triple H and Stephanie, and I and I'm I'm gonna have my mom help me make a sign that to be too excited. I'm gonna ask her to help me. Sweet. And um, I just it, it, you know I think about her and I think about her. I think about Elizabeth from Randy, and I think about Bruce and Lana at the same time, and I'm like, okay. The ups and downs of their relationship, and there's not a lot of ups and downs with Lana and Rusev, but I just, you know, when I think about both of them at the same time, I'm like, you need to just think about one one at a time, and I'm like, I can't because I loved Elizabeth and Randy so much when I was little. It it's just for them, it's the same thing, and I'm like, it's. I know, I know, but 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 listen, listen, 
Lana Lana is is not injured and let's like I told you last week man let's let's see let's wait and see where the uh, where they go with with Lana and Dolph Ziggler we'll have to wait and see what happens and and, and you know and if she's got August uh, what did you say August fifteenth is your tickets yeah yeah, yeah. Or my my the pre sale for twenty six so me and um. So my dad's gonna help me get the tickets on the 26th. I just gotta ask but, my uncle if he'll take me because my cousin lives all the way out in Canton. All right. The well, event is on the is on the August 15th, though, right? Yeah, it's on a All right. Well, then, yeah, you're, 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 you're gonna get to see Rusev and Lana as characters at the live event. As far as meeting Triple H and Stephanie, I don't even think they go to house. Is it a house show or a TV taping? House show. Yeah, you're not you're not seeing Triple H and Stephanie then. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Uh, Rusev Lana, okay. you'll see. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard or not, but the Red Wings got a new coach today. Oh man, the Red Wings. See, I haven't been following fan. NHL. I know a little about it, but I don't know the name off the top of my head. I know we got the NHL and the uh, and the NBA playoffs going on right now. So, Jackie, listen, let's see what happens next week on Raw, and uh, give us a call next week, and we'll see uh, we'll see where they're going with uh, Lana Rusev and uh, Dolph Ziggler. All right. Okay. All right. All have right, a good week. I'll talk to you guys next week. All right. Be I gotta good. be good, I will. Jackie. I gotta address I one. Oh, you said be good. All right. I, I got to address, I don't have the quote because you just took it away, but somebody in the chat room just says something to the effect of, that's how we, f I just did the gun, pff, like, kill me now when, when she kept battling, and the chat said, oh, that's how we feel when you don't acknowledge us. I, we have the chat up all, what they need to understand is, we acknowledge you the whole time, we're doing a live show, if I glance over, and I did for the very first 20 minutes of the show, you guys were joking with each other, like, telling knock-knock jokes, and laughing and LOL, knock, knock, LOL, knock, knock, LOL. I can't incorporate that onto the air. I always try and, and first of all, getting a word in when he's on a rant. You, you're not doing it. But, yeah, I don't know what you want me to do. I try and incorporate everybody. Jay Morgan, <laughs> considering the open of this train wreck of a show, have you two considered marriage counseling? Boy, we should. Well, that's, I, in my opinion, I think that's like a fun thing to listen to. Like two people arguing, there's of always course. fun because you either agree with one side or the other. And it kind of puts you in a position where you're rooting for someone almost. Like I hear it, I listen to radio all the time, Stern, Bubba, yeah. That's what uh, Stern does, man. Of course. He, and, and Larry David's whole thing with Kirby enthusiasm, he would give each side a case, and he said if he felt one case was, like, too obviously the right one, he would try and give the other one the right, like, amount, and that way the audience would be torn down the middle. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, Scott, I don't know how to say that, Neeld, Neld. Hiya, guys. Thoughts on the low ratings for TNA and Ring of Honor last week? Was it a one-off because TNA moved to Wednesdays, or are they in real trouble? I know you have a whole ratings thing. I will just No, show. it's not. I mean, look. I don't have anything man. to say. I, I thought they were about what I expected, and that was that's my whole opinion. That's about what we expected. I mean, listen, they're on a new night. It's Wednesday night, right? People and are replays of their original Sinclair show. So anybody right. die hard enough to watch it that's in those markets are watching it, so they're not going to rewatch it. A right. day later, or whatever it is, two days later. People co become accustomed to TNA on Friday nights, and the show moved to Wednesday nights. There hasn't been much promotion letting the people know, except for online, that show is moving to Wednesday nights. There's been no advertising. Anybody who watches I mean, it's an online fan, I think. Yeah, I don't watch Destination America, yeah. but I'm sure they've been airing commercials and things like that, saying TNA moving to Wednesday nights. But, I mean, listen... People, fans now need to become accustomed to TNA now airing on Wednesday nights instead of Friday nights. Yeah. So, you know, it was the first week. Let's wait and see what happens next week and the week after and the week after it that. Change. See what happens. But I don't think the ratings are gonna no. are gonna move that much, man. If you're I willing mean, to watch TNA on Destination America, that means you're fully aware of what TNA is. Right. You either have Destination America or you went out of your way to get it. Right. Bottom line is, anybody who cares about TNA is watching TNA at this point. It's just a bad network, and it's you're not going to exactly. get you're not going to get more than four hundred, five hundred thousand viewers not. every week. It's Maybe a spoiler happen. comes out where something crazy happens, and then right. you'll see your max on that. And that's where when people think taping in advance hurts the numbers, no, it doesn't. If you do something big on your taping, people are going to watch, and the word gets out, everybody yeah. will tune in to see it. Right. It's the exact opposite of what people think. Like, oh, results are out; they're not going to tune in. Right. 
if that was the case, nobody's tuning in to Raw because it's pretty fucking obvious what's going to happen every goddamn week on that show, and they still get four million people to just, hey, I'll check out three hours of the most boring fucking TV in the world. Right. For years straight. Right. Tom Nelson says... Mike Butler. Oh, Mike Butler is what I got, and he says, with Ryback feuding with the Big Show, uh, with Ryback feuding with the Big Show, now who do you see Bray Wyatt feuding with next? He's been kind of off TV for a while. Hey, you know... Like, he wasn't even on Raw last there night, There was, was a he? promo last night on Raw. I didn't see it if there was. What did he do? No, there was no Bray Wyatt anything last night. I there could... wasn't a Bray Wyatt anything. No. But there was a promo on Raw. I want to say, was it Harper and Rowan? Did they cut a promo After last win, night yes. on Raw? They cut a promo. After they won. They, and they, they were establishing their catch line, so. But they referenced some things that didn't make a lot of sense. And it seemed like the opposite of what Bray Wyatt had been doing in recent that's weeks. That's you reading into it. That's right, not. Maybe that's me. But Listen, they might go there. We'll see. But the promo they cut last night, what I got out of it was, they're establishing their little, like, each, Harper and Rowan each has a catchphrase. Okay. And they were setting up the catchphrase and then paying it off by saying the catchphrase. Uh, and they're probably going to do the next thing on, the same thing on SmackDown. They'll probably do the same thing on Raw next. They, they're, I think they're establishing their, their I, lines. I would love to see. Because it was a big setup and then the payoff line. Hey, I, if, if it were me, I'd love to see Harper and Rowan cut that promo last night on Raw, that creepy, kind of cryptic promo. That creepy, kind of cryptic promo. That and then pick up the have Bray Wyatt team with Bo Dallas. And Bo Dallas would obviously need some sort of gimmick change, clearly. Um, unless That's they not do, yeah. you know. But have the brothers team up against the other brothers, not real life brothers, but real life You're brothers. You're writing the whole storyline in your head. Where do you get this from? What happened last night? I'm not even criticizing. Something I'm you. bringing up, man. I'm not. See, you get offended by that. I'm asking you what makes you think that. I'm trying to engage with you. You're like, oh, he's. He's telling me I'm dumb. I'm not saying you're wrong or dumb. I'm just saying, why do you think that? What made you think that? It's just an idea, man. So, your fantasy booking in your head, or did you see something on Raw that said, ah, I I just saw Rowan and Harper calling somebody out, man. I'm I'm honestly asking you a question. I'm not, man. Okay. (laughs) I saw Harper and Rowan cutting kind of a cryptic promo, and I didn't see them trying to get over their lines. I. Where saw does them Bo Dallas and the brother with Bray coming in? It was just an idea. If you've got Rowan and Harper... He's getting offended. I'm just asking you. I'm trying to understand why you, your brain went there. Negative, man. What? what we got? Tom Nelson up next. That's you. I just read one. Uh, <laughs> when will Brock Lesnar return? Uh, he's advertised for a couple of dates. Um... Coming up, a couple of Raw TV tapings. Um, a July special on the, the network in Japan. Japan tour as well. It's July um, 4th against Kofi Kingston on the network as part right. of a live special. Right, they're going to do the live special um, overseas. Or tape so. special, whatever, it's special. Right, yeah. right. So he'll be coming back really soon, man. Yeah, within the next, maybe, maybe not next week, but maybe the week after. Right. Uh, Matt Johnson says, what's with... The god awful TNA storyline. I don't watch this. Oh, I heard about this stuff. <laughs> Where Ugh. James Storm pushed Mickey James onto a train track. Rip off from House of Cards? Question mark. He says in parentheses, uh, and then he follows up by saying Jr. was even heavily criticizing it and the logic behind it. It was weird. I mean, they there were segments with James Storm and Mickey James throughout Impact last week. Man, they were in an office building, uh, you I know, heard going about back and forth, and then it ended with the whole it train track segment. It sounded douchey but as it hell. Was, it was pretty ridiculous. Right. Mickey James came out on Twitter and responded. We put that up on the website. Uh, check it out. TNAWrestlingNews.com. We've got uh, we've got more on that. But it was just a brutal, brutal storyline angle. Thank you. Um, I'll take this one too. It's David I Hadley. read the last one. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, you're right. Uh, do you guys think <laughs> WWE focusing on just a few people at once as top talent does disservice to the product? Why is the main event scene just Reigns, Rollins, Ambrose, Kane when Bray That's Wyatt and Cesaro, Cesaro could add to that? Yeah, you know, they're, they're in the process of building new stars. Yeah, like Bray Wyatt and Cesaro, they're both big stars and... I'm just kidding. No, I understand exactly what you're saying. Every week, there's the same three or four people in the main storylines. It's Ambrose, Ron. It's all the Shield guys, and then that's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Jason Hansen says, thoughts on... Uh, <laughs> Do you even remember this promo? All right, uh, we'll see if you remember it. Uh, Jason Hansen says, thoughts on Ben Rothwell's uh, post-fight promo. Uh, that's one question. And then he says, picks for Verdun versus Velasquez. I personally wouldn't be shocked if Verdun pulled off an upset. Uh, big Ben Rothwell, the heavyweight. He's bald, he's fatting. Uh, he knocked out or tapped out. He beat somebody pretty good this at the Dan Henderson show. Oh, he beat Matt Mitrion right. by submission. He put him in the memory, put him in the guillotine, and Matt tapped out with both hands. <laughs> like most people tap out like this. He was like, ta he was tapping with both hands. Uh, but after the fucking fight, they interview, like they, every everybody that wins, they interview him in the cage. And Ben Rothwell started cutting this pro wrestling promo where like he said his piece and then he was done. But the guy was like, well, wait, I got a question. Uh, I'm not answering any Right, it's really cool. like he got super tough guy badass mode and like was like super care he was clearly not being a normal person. He was clearly being a character. Right. Like you'd have to see it to understand what I'm saying. But it was so douchey. And then the guy was like, Well can I ask you a couple uh, can I ask you a couple questions now that you got that off your chest? And he just stood there with his grill like he was trying to be a heel. It was douchey. It was douchey, man. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh prediction I got Velasquez over we do. Uh, I'll take Velasquez over Verdum. Uh, Vincent Nugent, what do you guys think about the top 40 finalists of WWE Tough Enough? Are there any, or are there any contestants mm. that appeal to you boys? Um, oh, okay. yeah, I mean, there's the Big O that's in there, who's Zack Ryder's buddy from, uh, yeah, I don't, they've I done the reality, the you know, the YouTube stuff, the reality show. He was on the on. Long Island East. Yeah. Or the yeah, it was, was the Big O from, uh, that. from that, but... Other than that, I'm not. I don't know too many than too many of the names. I mean, I know that a lot of them use gimmick names on the indie scene, so I would have to go back and research each name. But the only name that I really know is uh, is the Big O. So, oh, well, there's an example that. I can give you to where it's like, oh, you're not a big wrestling fan, you're gonna follow the indie scene, you know, these indie names. But when uh, the Ultimate Fighter happens with UFC, right? It'll be 18 guys, whatever it is, 18 guys. I'll just say. When the show starts, I won't know any of them by name. Right. When you get to know them through the show, and they talk about, I fought this guy at this show with that guy, and then I'll be like, oh, I remember watching it. Like, yeah. So then you start to remember, like, oh, I know who that guy is. Right. But just as a name on a paper, you're like, who the fuck is that? But then when you see him, you kind of remember, and then when he tells the story, you're like, oh, 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 I know who he is. Right. So I'm right. hoping that's what Tough Enough is. I haven't even looked at the list yet, but I, I haven't heard any names that jump out at me from just talking to people. Uh... Speaking of talking to people, reading this name is like the highlight of my night. <laughs> HB Goo says, are they going to keep Sting winless in the WWE? No. If he wrestles again, he's winning, I would think. I think they would make sure to match him against somebody that's not afraid to lose. You would hope so. I would, would hope, hope so. But then again, you never know. Maybe Sting's just in there for the money. He doesn't care. And they're like, well, let's get somebody else over on your on your back. Right. Not that they got Triple H over on his back because he was already fucking over. He didn't need to lose, <laughs> but they, they booked it in a way where all oh, they justified. Triple H should win. Right. Van Brown, if the authority does have Rollins go on his own, do you guys think they will have another guy take his place? And if so, what about Roman Reigns? Um, there, We'll see what they do with Seth Rollins. I have heard talk like, of them subtly preparing Reigns for a heel, heel turn and subtly preparing Rollins for a face turn. With that said, I completely disagree with what I've heard, but I've heard people say that they're like planting the seeds to switch those two. So Reigns can be the guy protected because he's a heel, he's got the, the top guys around him that, that kind of talk for him, like Triple H will cut the promos for him and then he'll just be the badass that goes out and kills somebody, Roman Reigns. Right. So it would be a better character for him. And Rollins, since he can talk a little bit, let's let him try and swim on his own as a big... So I've heard the talk of that, but I don't I don't see any uh, seeds planted to where I would think that's what's coming. Yeah. But I've yeah. heard that. Roman Reigns should go heel. No doubt about it. I think it would be a better fit. Like, when we I thought the so. Shield was breaking up, Ambrose was clearly the top heel. Reigns was clearly the top face. And then Rollins was the guy we are like, what, what is he even going to do? Boy, and then yeah, Rollins the became way. the top yeah. heel... Reigns became a babyface that didn't work, and Ambrose became the secondary babyface. They said, all right, let's make him the first babyface now. Like, that's what, right. what they're doing lately. Right. <clears throat> uh, even last night, Ambrose is, or Reigns is sitting there with a chair outside the barricade smiling, right. and you're wondering, what the fuck is he smiling at? And then Ambrose's music hit, and he's like, ah, like he started smiling. Like, like he's this little lackey now. It's, right. It's, it's like a reverse position. Right. Good. 
Uh, Jason Hansen, up next. Brandon Brown. Congratulations, buddy, right, we, uh, on totally losing the chat room. Folks are having their own show. Yeah, Left but that was within ass, 10 oh, Bob, minutes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, within 10 minutes, they were doing knock-knock jokes to each other, and I'm like, I even brought it up. I said, I don't even... Hey, we couldn't take them in. I was looking at the chat trying to bring up something to talk about, and I'm like, well, unless I explain their joke, there's nothing to repeat here. Uh, yeah, Vincent what? Nugent, of course, finishes with a small book, and he says... <coughs> I gotta take a deep breath. Here's an interesting joke that I found. Uh, quote, An old woman walked into a dentist's office, took off all her clothes, and spread her legs. The dentist said, quote, I think you have the wrong room. End quote. Quote, You put in my husband's teeth last week, she replied. Quote, Now you have to remove them. End quote. Ah, uh, you put the mouth and the teeth in the pussy. That's Ooh. not even that funny. <laughs> For the amount of work I had to do to tell that joke, there was no laugh at the end of it. That was terrible. Yeah. That was terrible. No. And on that note, we will end a terrible... We gotta come up with something better than that to end with. That that, that was garbage. Good lord, that was terrible. Somebody call in with something good in the last two minutes here. We we got, uh, We got the NBA Finals on ABC right now, so you should tune out from us. And tune in to ABC. There and you go. Uh, we will be back here next Tuesday night, as we always are, from 8 to 10 Eastern Time. WWE SmackDown main event spoilers are going to be up on WZROnline.com. We're going to have live spoilers here in just a little bit. Um, we will How see you, you guys next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time, for Matt That's, Boone. That's me. We don't want this feedback. This is Brian Clark. That's him. Say, see you next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time on WZR Online. I don't even have the song ready, but yeah. Dot com. Let's sign off. You <laughs> fucking idiot, dude. <laughs> Give me a minute. Uh, play something, man. All right, I'll just right. play some themes music. All right, we got a closing <laughs> song again every show. Oh, we're 